Have you ever found yourself wondering, what if WizKids had every property under the sun, and those properties had dials? Well, this is the show for you. Welcome back to episode three of Sculpt Swap. This week, we are working on the ogre, the zombie ogre, to be precise, and... Man oh man, has he got a lot of detail going on. This once again comes from the game shop in Bellevue. Uh, I picked up both of these at the same time and just finally got around to painting this guy. Right off the bat you can tell he's got way more details than the Manticore had. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle, a little bit of an uphill battle, and it actually took me about an hour longer to paint this guy than it did the Manticore. Um, the camera's not quite in focus right here, but he's basically got like a leather belt, some sort of fur... Uh, pouch thing. These are the Vallejo WizKids paints. Um, I forgot to mention that they were Vallejo paints last time. All right, before we get started painting, let's figure out what exactly makes an ogre zombie an ogre zombie. Um, what's this? Ogre zombie. Okay, don't know what I expected there. Uh, so if you don't know what a zombie is, um... You know, just watch some TV or something sometime. They've been in media for a while now, uh, quite a while. Uh, this particular zombie, uh, it says, is made from necromantic magic, infuses the remains of the dead. Very, very deadly and interesting. He is a pretty scary thing, but uh, ogres are already a pretty scary foe to face off against, let alone one that's you know, nigh unkillable. So some th points to realize or to, to mention for this is he's got 85 hit points, which is quite a bit of life. He has a very high strength value and very low intelligence and wisdom. So we have things in hero clicks like super strength. We also could kind of use intelligence and wisdom to denote like battle fury because he's not smart. Um, it'll also, you know, we'll be able to get rid of some powers, like some support powers and different things like that. Um, his actions include the Morning Star weapon that you see him with. Uh, he has Undead Fortitude, which is if damage reduces the zombie to zero hit points. So if he was to be hit and go to zero hit points, you make a constitution saving throw with a DC of plus five. The damage taken unless the damage is radiant or from a critical hit. Okay. Uh, on a success, the zombie drops to one hit point instead. So, kind of like a stop click, but you have to roll for it. Um, but yeah, we could... I mean, Hero Clicks has stop clicks and things similar to that. Maybe like a stop click super senses? Uh, I think just a normal stop click would be fine. Uh, let's see. Dark Servants. Let's see here. From somewhere in the darkness, a gurgling moan is heard. A form lurches forward, into view dragging one foot as it raises bloated arms and broken hands. A zombie advances, driven to kill anyone too slow to escape its grasp. Very interesting. 30 speed is pretty average. I mean, that is exactly average for D&D. Uh, &D. This is, again, 5th edition. Um... The senses, um, dark vision 60 feet and passive perception, that's not really going to affect anything as far as hero clicks go. He's got a mace, so he's not doing any range stuff, and he's not targeting anybody with like perplex or outwit. He's too dumb. So I think that's enough to go off of. Um, the rest of this is just more zombie lore, which, again, if you don't know zombies are... I can't really help you with that. Uh, they're just reanimated corpses uh, through either magic or curse or whatever have you kind of thing. Um, disease, apparently, and normal stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think that's enough to go off of. Um, immune to poison. That could work. He does have a really low armor class, so maybe like low defense would be fine. Um, yeah. I think we've got enough to go off of, so let's switch over to HC Realms here. And I like using HC Realms search function because it just has so many options. Um, there's status, rarity, rank, sculptor. Things that I will never use are things like sculptor, and rank actually does have some 
you can like search via ata's location bonus battlefield conditions so rank actually is a good one to use if you're looking at stuff like that but for this guy all we really need to know is uh he's gonna go on a two by two because he's a bigger sculpt and it's just gonna be easier than finding a peanut base or a single base that he fits on um i'm gonna try putting range is zero and see what that limits me to Hopefully not too much. You don't want to fill out too much of this stuff when you're searching for things because uh, some special powers and stuff won't show up if you do. Um, let's go with, since he has that really high strength value, I think that's his main key point. Let's go with attack power is super strength. And we'll see where that leads us. All right, so right off the bat, we have Giant Man. And can't use that dial it starts with outwit this one has perplex it's not too bad zero range uh it does have combat reflexes i don't think the zombies exactly combat reflexes he's a big hulking smash monster i do like the super strength followed up by some quake um what is this speed power oh retaliation yeah um so he's got a stop click retaliation that's not bad for 125 points i could kind of get over the fact that he's got three clicks of perplex um, the super senses kind of works as well with a rollout, but let's keep looking. Sasquatch, not a bad figure attack and speed wise. The charge, place him within five and line of fire. He may use quake at no cost. That's not bad, but I don't like all the perplex and outwit, so I don't think that's going to be a useful thing. He's just too smart for his own good in this situation. Next up, Eugene Torbit Witterspan, the Jugger Nerd. Um, a lot of perplex, but he has a lot of dials. So if we only put him at like 50, oh, he's even got 25 point line. So yeah, if we played him at 50, super strength quake, it's a good combo. Um, hit characters can't be given actions except move actions. That doesn't really make sense for the zombie ogre, but that's not bad. Doesn't count against themes. Doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, the charge super strength quake is fine. It's not a bad combo. Colossus, what does he do? More of the same. He has a retaliation on these special damage clicks. Charge, traded charge. Uh, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character that's adjacent to one or more degree markers he created this turn so he bursts through a wall and potentially damages people that way that's not terrible kind of a high cost dial um wendigo actually wouldn't be a bad option there's battle fury exploit super strength blades eh, kind of um but i i don't like playing wendigo casually and that's how i'm gonna play this guy so i'll skip over wendigo because that's the dial kind of matches, but not really. He does have a stop. He does have invuln. Defense values are okay. Kind of want him to be lower, but we'll skip over Wendigo just because of the sheer amount of healing that he does. It's kind of silly. Um, next up, AI Hulk. Eh. Um, he's an uncommon from the set, so it's not a bad figure to sculpt swapped with at all. Uh, it starts with charge. It's got a really long 350 dial, so I'm looking at these lower dials because these make more sense for an ogre zombie than the larger one. Um, I do really like the low defenses at the bottom here. He kind of starts a little high, but at the lowest points, like 17 being the highest is fine with me. Um, he's got charge with super strength. When he's given a move action, oh, that's the mass destruction. When he's given a move action, after resolutions destroy all adjacent pieces of blocking terrain, then he can use Quake at no cost. So basically, super strength Quake, that's pretty solid. He does have one click of steel energy, which is fine for a zombie to kind of heal itself, um, either through magic or eating things or whatever. Um, no tricks, no hiding. Hulk's strongest there is. Battle Fury, when Hulk attacks one or more characters, they can use shape change super senses or stealth modify his damage plus one. I like that he's got battle fury, so that's because he's a real dumb. I mean, not Hulk, but uh, zombie ogre is pretty much the dimmest thing possible. Um, other than not attacking whoever created it, 
he doesn't really make a lot of smart decisions on his own. So Battle Fury's kind of a good thing. I like that. And he can't be mind controlled. So that's, yeah, that's traded Battle Fury's fine. When he's targeted with Outwit or Perplex, roll a d6, 4 through 6 until your next turn. Protected Outwit and Opposing Perplex. So he's like, I could I could get behind that. He's too stupid to be outwitted or perplexed. Um, and then he's got the stop on two of these clicks. Free roll of d6, five through six, remove an action token from Hulk. I'd prefer if it was only one stop. Because it only happens to the ogre when he gets to zero, or when he would get to zero hit points, but that's fine. Um, I actually really like the combo of Super Strength, Quake, Battle Fury, Zero Range, Charge, Low Defenses. I think that's a pretty solid option. And he's only an Uncommon, so um, let's keep looking, though. There might be something better. Uh, leadership Perplex, that's a no-go for me. Um, leadership. This Groot's great. But he spawns those walking woods. He's got charge, super strength, impervious. He's got pretty decent values till the end, so that's not too bad. He has poison, which the zombie ogre is protected poison. Doesn't say he does poison, but he's protected from it. Um, I just don't like the leadership. And then you can heal if you're in hindering terrain. Um, not very zombie-esque, but not a bad option, just not the best. Giant Girl, Super Strength Charge, Close Combat Expert Sidestep, more Super Strength Charge, more Sidestep, Close Combat Expert. Not, I mean, kind of a boring dial for this guy, but not a bad dial at all. Um, oh yeah, Retaliation, sure. From the character with the Avengers keyword hits an opposing character, you may move her up to two squares. That doesn't do anything for me. Stop Toughness. Yeah, not a terrible option, just kind of boring. Uh, Groot from the Mighty Thor set. Charge Super Strength, some Close Combat Experts, some Quake. So this hits all the same points. Um, zero damage on the last. Okay, that's his, that's his Colossal Retaliation power. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, not a bad option here. There's a lot of the same that we've been seeing. Super Strength to Quake. Close Combat Expert thrown in. I wouldn't really necessarily call the Zombie Ogre a Close Combat Expert, but he's definitely like adapted to hitting things with a mace. Ms. Marvel. Kamala Khan. Uh, yeah, Perplex and Shape Change stuff, right? Uh, choose one. Tiny Symbol. Modifies your defense. Okay, so that wouldn't work. He's not going to shrink all of a sudden. Uh, and big and bash. So that's the quake power. That's actually you know, pretty decent. If we go with like the lower dial, then we have quake on the bottom end. Charge, super strength on the top end. I'd have to ignore this power, but otherwise it's not terrible. Stop click. It's got all the right stuff. Uh, Mangog, probably not going to work. He, he pulls the Odin sword. He retaliates pretty heavily. His defense actually goes back up to a 19 with Impervious. So a little too good for Zombie Ogre's dial. Um, Chaos War Giant Man. Yeah, more Outwit Perplex. Giganto Mole Monster. Not a bad option. This guy already pops off the base, kind of. Um, we've got Toughness, Exploit. Some pretty decent options. What is this? I've never even seen this. Oh, okay, yes I have. Um, just a 2x2 two two Spider-Man. Um, yeah, it's got the standard damage symbol. Probably not. He's not web-swinging. He's not doing anything. Um, the super strength is fine. The outwit's not. The Atom. He's actually a, a really awesome... He's also a really awesome option. So he's got Super Strength Quake. He's got Exploit, which I don't know if the Zombie Ogre could quite exploit, but maybe with that mace. He's got Close Combat Expert. Goes down to Toughness. Defense values stay fairly low. And then he's got that Stop Click with the Colossal Indifference. Some Plasticity Sidestep. Yeah, the Atom wouldn't be a bad option either. I think 
just because it's real cheap to get the uncommon AI Hulk with his Battle Fury, Quake, Super Strength combo, his charge, his stop clicks. Again, I'm playing him probably at 150 so that I'm limiting the stop clicks for the Zombie Ogre. Maybe 250 if I feel like really ramping up what he's capable of. But um, I really like the tapered down defense values. I like ending with that 14. Um, the ability to heal through steel energy, the stop click on his last click. Yeah, I think this is a solid winner. All right, so this guy, I decided not to do as crazy colors as I did with the Manticore, just because I really liked the sculpt. Not that I didn't like the Manticore sculpt, but I just really liked this guy's sculpt, and I really wanted to see how detailed I could get. Um, right off the bat, this guy is crazy more detailed. It's like they ramped up the difficulty spike. Manticore, fairly easy big areas to paint this guy had lots of cracks and crevices lots of details going on he's wearing like a fur kind of pelt thing with a belt around it and then he's got these arm and foot wraps that are kind of like mummy things so i decided to go with a different color for the arm and foot wraps and then a darker like tan for the pelt the the fur on his belt um I like to kind of just make up a little background story in my head when I do these. So as I'm painting, I'm kind of thinking like, what made him a zombie? Was there a necromancer nearby? Was it, you know, this or that? And I decided since the only thing that really stands out on him is that big mace, I decided to make up in my mind a little story about like this ogre went and grabbed a cursed mace and like used it until he fell in battle. And then the curse took effect and he was raised once again so i actually decided you know at that point to make the mace look as magically as possible um i'm not using the magnifiers right here i'm just using the light so that i can see into all the crevices it was really hard to see around all the little cracks and stuff uh but i went with the i actually used most of the whiz kids vallejo paints for this um didn't use a ton of stuff that I had on hand, but yeah, they had a dirty green kind of skin. I added some black to make it a little bit deeper. They had, that's just the straight tan for the pelt, it came out kind of like an orangish red. And then I mixed the yellow with a little bit of white to make it more uh, like just a lighter kind of yellow. Kind of looks like dirty bandages, which is a great look for this guy because uh, he's just a dirty, gross, like fresh from the grave kind of dude. Um, here I tried the purple wash that the set came with and then I realized it was a wash and so I, I stopped before I covered the mace too much in it, but you can kind of see the mace is purple. Um, I had to use the light a lot in this and man, there's just so many little details on this guy, so many little cracks and crevices and I love that about him because when you take the time and you just like get really in there and you cover those little details, it looks really good, but it's kind of a headache. Um, getting his mouth done with the white was really hard. Um, just cause he's got a much smaller face. So it kind of bled through. Um, but yeah, it's not looking too bad. The bandages come out good. The little fur patches look good. The belt is like a deeper color than the bandages, but not quite as red as the fur. So that's fine. Uh, the parts where the fur overlap his skin were kind of tough. You can kind of see like where he's been damaged and stuff there. Of course, I'm going to fill that in with like red and stuff later so that it's a little bit more gory and realistic. It's not just skin underneath his other stuff. Um, and there you go. It's already looking pretty solid as far as, I mean, up to my standards, that's already pretty close to being done. Um, but of course, I wanted to show you guys that I'm not just a novice painter. I can I can truly work miracles when put to the task. Uh, no. Um, but yeah, I, I really just spent a whole day doing this guy, and it I just enjoyed the heck out of it. Um, all the little cracks and crevices were a good little challenge. I had to pull out one of the finest brushes that I own, which, I mean, fine. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But yeah, you can see all those little pits and cracks, and uh, then, yeah, um, I guess this is the part of the video where I tell you that make sure you have a friend uh, judge your work the entire time you do it because, uh, man, look at those judging eyes. He's a good boy, though. That's Milo. He's a good boy. Um, 
now he's just sleeping behind me. But yeah, at this point, I'm kind of adding a little bit of details. I'm doing some highlighting. I had to speed this video up a lot because there's about three hours of video for this one. But uh, yeah, I went back into the mouth, added some black. He has a tiny little necklace that I tried to draw in like wood kind of color. Um, I eventually mix the purple with a bunch of the silver to try and make this like metallic purple kind of looking thing. It didn't turn out too bad. In the light, it really shines pretty bright. It's like a very deep purple. But again, I was going for like cursed object mace. So it's like brimming with magic energy kind of thing. And Mr. Ogre was just too dumb to notice. Um, but yeah, doing his little fingernails with like a dirty bone white kind of color. Uh, his bandages look like a muddy, gross kind of push tool thing. I added some black highlights to the belt to really make it pop. At this point, I'm doing a red wash over a lot of like the wounds and stuff, a lot of the little crevices and cracks on his body to really make all those like muscles and stuff pop. Um, this figure was actually just really fun to do. It did take a long time, but yeah, at this point, he's like, I think he's better than the previous one. I think I've gotten a little bit better. Well, I took more time on him, obviously, but um, I think just between uh, doing the washes and having all those little detail spots, he really turned off well. And at this point, as you can tell, I'm tearing off the Hulk dial. I'm using my flat hobby knife blade to pry it open. <laughs> it took me a little while. And then, of course, I'm just drilling the holes, um, measuring where he's at, marking him, drilling the Hulk's feet. He had little pegs already, so he's going to fit exactly where he was before. And then I just drilled out the pegs where the pegs were inserted on the top of the dial, snap my little magnets in, add some glue to make sure they hold, do the same with the Hulk, and the same with the ogre. And yeah, there you have it. Zombie ogre that fits on a Hulk dial. I think he's pretty. I didn't bother bother painting his base this time. Um, I might get around to it later, but the like plain white primed like looks enough like rock. I think it I would just make it muddy and that's fine. Um, but yeah, he's got all the details, all the little scratches and blood marks. And he's got that beautiful purple mace that he's lofting up so that he can bring it down and ogre zombie smash. Once again, thank you for watching this episode of Click Swap. I had a ton of fun with this miniature, and you can too if you go down to any of your local game stores that sell the Paint Night kit. Um, it comes with everything you need. It won't come with everything I used, but you don't need it. Um, you can just super glue them straight to a base if you have an extra AI Hulk. If not, it's a pretty cheap figure. I think you can get them for like three bucks, probably another three for shipping. So maybe like six or seven when everything's said and done. But it's a, a golden age figure that you can bring life back to with an ogre zombie. You can bring some undead life back to that dial. And isn't that fun? Until next time, everyone, keep click swapping.